Good afternoon, friends. I think today is, yeah, September 3rd. My goodness, we've made it in to the ninth month, and hasn't it just been a bullet going a million miles an hour since this whole cacophony of deception that your Lord warned you about? Uh, a deception coming back there in mid March. And doesn't it just feel like it was just a couple weeks? You know, doesn't it feel that way? Just a couple weeks ago, it was mid-March, and now all of a sudden we have finally gotten into this territory of the fall, autumn time and the uh, times and seasons, as you would understand them to be the next three deployed, fulfilled feasts that your Lord is using as part of his plan that we talk about all the time on this channel. I mean, it's just part of scripture. You just have to understand how Christ fulfills feasts in that you can be part of what he is doing. And his magnus opus, magnum opus, that he's always um, focusing back on and all scripture should tie to it in one way or another in terms of his most important work that he's doing is to create this one new mankind in Christ through grace, through faith. And so we talk about the fact that the first four spring feasts are the gospel as he fulfills them. They are the gospel, Passover, death, unleavened bread, burial, first fruits, stop calling it Easter, please. First fruits, uh, resurrection of the first from among the dead into this new creation of Christ. God becomes his own creation, the unthinkable. And we can get back into his image, be conformed to his image and back into the, the righteous arms of a loving God who welcomes us. And then 50 days later, you have Pentecost, which is that first downpour of this this um, two two sets of, of rains, the former and the latter, and it is that first expression of the Holy Spirit going inside uh, the 120. And just a little bit before that, in the end of John, you see Jesus breathing out the Holy Spirit onto the disciples, not Judas though. And he says, receive ye the Holy Spirit. So very, very, very interesting how you have those spring feasts really showing you God's plan as Christ fulfills them. Whether you keep them or not is really inconsequential. That's your liberty to do with what you want. But really, you have to understand how Christ fulfills these feasts. They're in Leviticus uh, 23, for re or 20, either 23 or 25, I believe it's 23 for a reason. And so he uses these. So those ones are done, right? Check, 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 and check. And so now as you're getting into the September, October period in a very weird year, we're going to talk about this in a moment after we watch this cute little raccoon video, because all this stuff just zaps the energy right out of you, right? Like I've never slept so deep and so good and so intense in my whole life. And being on top of the news and seeing how we're getting closer and closer and closer to the pay attention period of time between September, October. And boy, if we could just get past September 20th, September 17, 18, 19, 20 in that uh, vicinity of time or that block of time, if we could just get past that, uh, then we would know with more certainty that it is likely that Christ is going to fulfill October and that that moon is at that uh, Virgo's feet there as matching the conditions in Revelation 12 5 that moon being at her feet that sliver moon that day and hour that no man knows you're supposed to pay attention and be watching for that day because Christ fulfills feasts and so uh we're we are we're getting close to that and so if we could just get past September then we could know that we really need to pay attention and lock on to October and be watching. And God is a date setter. You know, people just need to seriously deal with that. If you say you believe the Bible, believe the Torah, believe the Tanakh, and believe the renewed covenant and the New Testament where the new covenant is, and it shows that God does everything according to an appointed time. I can't tell you how many times scripture talks about at the appointed time. Isaac came at the appointed time. Jesus was made a human being at the appointed time. Galatians says. Genesis says. And there's so many things that, that are 
They have been dealt with and planned and put into the hearts and minds of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit back before creation was even made. So you have an established plan and he's trying to get people through his Hebrew scripture. I mean, he's a Hebrew, just deal with it to understand his plan. This is not hard stuff to figure out. It just takes some patience to learn. So as we're watching this weirdness of in, uh, kicking off, you're going to get vaccinated, they say, on November 1st is when it's going to be ready. We're going to have a million-man um, army. I was listening to a strange, strange woman, hard to figure out. Uh, she was discussing that. A million-man army. Um, and the, the military is going to be used. And, you know, as you really delve into, and we'll, we'll get to it, but as you really delve into this particular thing they want to put in your arm, not your forehead and not your hand, <laughs> that's later. That's something else. They want to put this thing into your deep muscle tissue. You really start to understand this relationship between all of this commerce, all of this database that they want to make um, you and the cloud, the cloud and you, how you will see the um, use of the Chinese credit score for all of humanity and so much more uh, when you consider everything there is to know about this thing they want to put in your arm for Ebola, as I call it. I like to call it Ebola. But before we get into all of that, it just doesn't it just drain you? Doesn't it just absolutely drain you? You're at the finish line. You can see this thing wrapping up and you can see a big transition coming, big transition. And God splits everything down the middle between the slave and unbelief, who's going to get kicked into, cut off and kicked into a kingdom that is getting significantly worse and more dark with a uh, techno crazy technocracy. And I just learned a new word yesterday. Tech, what was it? Techno fascism, fa fascism fascism, uh, which is just unbelievably amazing. And then all these connections. Oh, my goodness. There's so many connections to put together. It's just really something to behold how this is all coming together and how Christ also is dividing humanity uh, with, with the beloved heirs in Christ, the one new mankind in Christ, his bride, and he's coming to redeem us. Before we delve into that, because it is just a whole ton of information, so, so much information, it's just exhausting. Let's watch a cute little animal video first. And he just cute. He liked his grape. He's so cute. He ate him fast. He's like, oh no, there's no more. <laughs> Look at him. Oh my goodness, that's so cute. He's like, there's more coming, right? <laughs> but you hit the jackpot, whatever house you paid your way into. So cute. You rub his little paws together. Nom, 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 nom. That's so cute. <laughs> that was cute. Okay. Now on to the horrible, awful stuff. So there, there are so many pieces to this. Part of the challenge of making videos is knowing just how much to put in and how much to stop. And it's just so overwhelming. Maybe you feel that way sometimes too. There's, It's like we're going so fast. Right? And didn't Trump name this whole thing Warp Speed, Operation Warp Speed, right? Well, shortly we will get into a little bit more about the vaccine. I'm not going to say that word. The thing you're going to get in your arm <laughs> for Ebola, because it really is about tying you into a database, a global database. And Lancet is a part of that. And there is a channel on here that we'll be going to in a little bit after we check out what's going on here at aceagefarmer.com and his YouTube channel. Uh, 
they re- they need you to be in this database so that they can get a head count on you. And I've kind of talked about that before. I've talked about how Christ has a lamb's book of life and Lucifer wants to get um, his dark database of all the names of what will end up being all the slaves that end up going into this last seven years of human history that is just going to be absolutely awful. And uh, there's so much death that is projected, you know, for all of the lying garbage of this one world religion that is just souping up a hundred miles an hour and so much could be said about that as well um and we'll 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 get it all out there and talked about i do love uh current events and i do love biblical worldview and i do see and hopefully you see it too how it's all swinging together it is all going together and it is going so rapid and so fast And if there was ever a time to just really kind of need that spiritual adrenaline to kick in, to give you time, effort, energy, to be able to pray and to seek his face and to warn others that don't see it and to help people get born again as we're, we are coming dangerously close to the time of transition, the time of the Messiah coming and cutting off and separating in great division, the slaves and the heirs and he was the one that said for one shall be taken and the other left and it is per this day and hour no man knows which if you get into christ's mind as a j as a hebrew as an israelite then you will understand that he is talking about this next very first in order feast of trumpets yom hadin day of judgment yom teru your day of shouting blowing up the trumpet and your freedom your freedom Wherein he will clothe you, the, the, the saints of God, with your glorified flesh. And you have a new story written for you, which is a really neat way of saying a new reality for you. And uh, much more could be said about that. But there's a transition coming is the big point of this. And as you see all of these things floating together, not floating, but like blowing a million miles an hour, like a... Like a um, mighty river or something like that uh you can see how it all is setting up for this transition and we've talked before about how the bible tells you that there's a a time of deception coming he shows you who's responsible for it the god makers as i call them or the people that believe that they can become gods or that they are gods or that they will be gods with this techno witchcraft christ said it like this he said that many would come in my name saying that i am the christ and deceive many but that you are not to believe them. And that's for those who will be here. It is warning now so that we can warn people. And it is warning for those people who will be left behind. That, I hate that, those books and movies. But those are Christ's words. Those are red words. So you best pay attention to Christ's red words. Because there was a heavy theme of judgment and division. Judgment and division. And so there is a hard-nosed period of time when Christ comes in transition and division and he warns about that in his scriptures and you can see these things coming just to even look at some of the titles um Australia's first recession over 30 years after deepest GDP D no GDP contraction on record a dp jobs data so i listened to the silver report a lot you might want to go check them out because him and a couple others i listened to really have their thumb on the pulse of what is happening with money and you are in such a position of vulnerability here in america but then also abroad with what these central banks are doing and when they get the go-ahead to pull the, the rug out from underneath you, having stolen all your wealth and leaving you with worthless paper dollars and putting you into literal slavery, taking away all of your power. Oh my goodness, friends. You are going to wish that you had listened if you were not born again. And there's a lot of fake Christians out there that are not born again. In fact, they are so spiritually inoculated against rebirth. They have religion in place of that they're doing this or they're doing that and and then maybe god will love them is how they look at that rather than just running with trust into the arms of christ as i like to say a metaphor and just trusting that he will take care of all your sins for you and put his spirit in you and make you alive again make you born again upon request 
I mean, it is so simple and yet there are people that wanna help him. And so they will be left behind. These are his red words, they're not mine. I just believe them. I have the faith to believe that the Messiah is coming as the Redeemer. I have the faith to believe that in Hebrews, as we're um, given good information and Isaiah, everything in like chapter, oh, from like 53 on to, to 60, there's so much going on. But you see this overarching theme of, of your Redeemer, your Redeemer, your Redeemer, your husband, and this beautiful celebration and this, this um, joy bringing the Gentiles in. God is not racist. God loves the Gentiles too. These, we are his creation and he loves the Jays. God is love. And so um, he is coming to set the captives free. Uh, justification that leads to sanctification and then that glorification. Well, you see all of these news pieces together. You see NATO begins provocative exercise on Russian border. <laughs> Turkey and Greece edge closer to war? Like, what is going on with that? What is your damage? Let's see, too, their lira is, a, is collapsing. And um, I know Greece has had tons of problem with their finance in, in years past. And really, you, again, this is just hearing, you know, rumors and wars. This is another thing that Christ said, that you would hear of wars and rumors of wars and so you're like check 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 i'm with you christ and christ is like i am i am predicting these things because i am god not me but christ sings i am god and i'm telling you what the conditions will be in that period of time that you need to be ready born again watching watching for the feast because i god fulfill the feast jesus and I am bringing my inheritance. I am bringing my kingdom of God in the application of clothing the new creation in Christ with their new flesh. And he invites everybody into that participation. And in fact, if you don't get into it, then you get consequenced. And you're watching the consequence of these horrible human beings, government all around the world, setting up, setting you up to become part of a database, to become um, part of a, a, a one world religion, a one world government, a one world monetary system, but a one world people, a one world people, a huge anti-church movement that will be global citizens with an oath, that will be Noahide compliant, which is a mandated forced, unpardonable sin, a rejection of Jesus of Christ, a rejection of Jesus as God. And as Madonna said, I don't really like her, but for her music, I hope she gets born again, but I, I don't know how that's going to work. Her heart is really, 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 whew, well, you know, much more could be said about that. Lord, we just pray Madonna gets saved so she doesn't got to go cook in the lake of fire forever and ever. But in her Eurovision um, performance with, uh, oh, I can't think of the black guy's name right now in this moment. Slips me. But her song was Not Everybody's Gonna Make It to the Future. And of course, they were all dancing around. You know, this was last year, gas masks and all this stuff. People were falling over dead. So, you know, um, and her ex-husband is part of this core group. And it's going to be like this, you know, grassroots meets, you know, governmental aid of an organization of people with heavy pressure tactics applied to the slaves that chose not to get into Christ, um, did not get taken, Christ's red words, but rather are left behind in this division. And everything in Matthew 25 is about division, division, and division. There's a consequence coming, and you're on a warp speed towards it, to borrow the orangest Mason President Kabbalah, Mr. Trump. Uh, Sons of Liberty Media broadly deem his life, despite hundreds and thousands of those thingies debunking that thingy. Government says, get ready for vaccinations. And then don't speak over here, adds in FDA commissioner 
willing to skip phase three trials. How creepadocious is that? Now listen, warns states to be ready by November 1. So for someone like myself that has spent a couple years now just delving into everything I could get my hands on about the feast and really specially um, focusing on the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Hadin, Judgment Day, the Day of the Lord, uh, this, this um, day when Christ comes to get his people and to cut off those that refuse to come. I have paid attention to those things for a couple of years now, I said, and all the scripture, there's so many scriptures that people are running right over in the Bible. They don't understand how it works into that. They don't understand. Old Testament, New Testament, and it all goes together. And when Christ says something or does something unusual in the New Testament, you're supposed to know the Old Testament well enough that you can connect the two. So in videos to come or as time permits, We'll try to get that done, but I am definitely feeling that sense like we are running out of time. We are running out of time. Um, when you see this November 1, so for someone like myself, who I've had my eye really hyper-focused in, I've gone to Stellarium, I think, four, maybe five times now. It's really hard for me to get my um, software to record in Stellarium. For me, it's really hard. I don't know why, but anyhow... And so I have seen the moon at Virgo's feet matching the conditions of your holy scripture in Revelation 12, um, 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Read that. And the moon being at her feet. I have seen that for this year, October the 17th. There are others out there, not a lot, who have seen something in September. But so for me personally, I have seen October 17th. And 18th, that is where my heart is right now. And so obviously those dates precede November 1st. So this is kind of what I have to go on. And I know that they have been talking so much about, you know, dark, dark winter and, and um, winter time. And I had ever mentioned to you before about these creepy NSA posters. And so many of them were just, they're so weird. But I've talked to you before about how they're very anti-Christian in nature. And they're very just strange, mocking about communism. Um, very do not tell, shut up, um, very secrety. Uh, these NSA posters, National Security Administration. And I don't believe the story that they told of how they got a hold of them. I believe it was messaging to everybody and also uh, messaging to you, too, to kind of let the cat out of the bag, as, as the devil likes to do. But he gets to choose the method by which he, he does that. And so it's always very, um, sometimes it's straightforward and other times it's not. So anyhow, these NSA posters had this weird, like, Christmassy theme, I had just noticed. And that was back in, I think, 2017, maybe 2018. But anyhow, the NSA posters. And now you can have them put on coffee cups and t-shirts. It's just so weird. But anyhow, you know, I, so... The, the other thing that I was thinking about as I was thinking about scripture, let me, let's just go there really quick. Hold on so you can see what I'm talking about. He says it in a whole bunch of different places, but let, we'll just pick one for a moment. So you've entered the pages of scripture, right? Here, let's do pink. I like pink where this big deception is happening, right? And he says that many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and deceive many, a bunch of big fat liars who say that they're gods, but they're totally not. They're just weak little humans on their way to judgment unless they repent otherwise. And he says, you'll still, you'll hear of wars and rumors of wars. Don't be troubled. He's talking to the church. Don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Don't be alarmed. Don't be terrified. And then he says that these things must come to pass. They must or set up. But the end is not yet. And the end has a beginning. And it has a middle. And it has an end. And he's saying the beginning has not begun yet. And it'll telescope out in the Greek. Beginning, a middle, and an end. And so this is setup. This is preliminary setup. And then, and so we've talked about this before, but it's important to understand. And I'm going somewhere with this. If you go over to the sister book, so to speak, Luke 21, 8 and 9 
So he says the same thing here in the answering questions that his disciples asked about the end. And he said, take heed that you be not deceived. Why? Because there'll be a big, giant global deception. And you're watching it. And it's Ebola, I like to call it. For many shall come in my name saying, I'm Christ. Does that sound familiar to you? And then he adds in them talking about, and the time draweth near. Now, there's quite a few applications to that because there are different people at different times that have come forth and said that we need to listen to this um, forthcoming uh, Jayish Messiah. So I've heard it in that context. But also, when you really listen to Klaus, um, I can't remember how to say his last name, but he is from the World Economic Forum. He has been a major voice in discussing the reset the reset. I think you could easily put into brackets after near put in reset, and you you you. There are there's so many people talking about this. Uh, Stopthecrime.net. Deborah Tavares. Um, so many people. So many documents out there. And, and independent journalists. Um, Richie from Boston. I I don't know about him, but. He brings up some important information every once in a blue moon, different paperwork, white papers and things like that. So anyhow, this this is the thing we have to understand about this time. You have to understand where you are in space and time. And I'm, I'm sorry, but the church is not going to help you. The church leadership is not going to help you understand these things and connect them together. So you have to feed yourself. I'm a big advocate on the Holy Spirit being your teacher, our teacher, our rabbi, our paraclete and Jesus. And they are willing to teach us. They are willing to help us. If I hear one more sermon on, don't be afraid, trust God, you need more than that. It's not a wrong message. It's just an incomplete message. And you have to know that there's a lot of Masonics, a lot of fakes, and a lot of bad guys that are pretending to be the church leadership, and they are liars. Okay? So I don't have time to deal with that anymore. I used to listen to hours of, of sermons on end. I used to listen to so many preachers and I'm to the point now where I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired of being deceived. <sighs> that said, I am really paying attention to what scripture is saying more so than what man is saying. I do listen to news a lot on YouTube. I do take into consideration what the moms, dads, and single people are saying. I did divide everything and find out is what they're saying. What I think truth is, and then divide that up, pour it through a biblical worldview. That's a lot of energy, but I don't mind doing that. So when we come to these types of texts, I mean, thinking about, you know, what are we seeing around us happen that is cultural, uh, that is cultural, I didn't even want to say the word relevant, but in the way that I mean it, it's like, you know, what is the news that's happening today that would make sense with what Christ told you would happen in this period of time, in this year of, of, of weirdness, in this year of deception, that he said, do not be deceived. Right, because I'm really paying attention to my marching orders right now to protect me and my brood and my family, my family and I, proper English. So do not be deceived. Okay, check. Got it, Jesus. I do not want to be deceived. I do I'm seeing all of these terrible Christian leadership popping off and non-leadership popping off saying that they're gods. And I'm like, okay, that's all happening at the same time of weirdness. Check. I see that one too. And then he says, in the time they, they and and they will say, in the time draws near. I think that he is using this modern day language that they say of the reset. And this is another check. We're seeing those things happen here in 2020, right? As we're paying attention, um, beholding, as Christ would say, behold. It's like this perceive, get it, understand what I'm saying, be aware, right? And then he says, and do not go after them. Do not listen to their deception, to their God-making garbage, and to them saying the time is drawn near, this reset, right? And he, he would know all of this stuff would be happening where they're trying to, like, bring you into this group salvation, right? So many different people, so many different Christian leaders, so many different groups, so many people are like, we all just need to unite for peace. And they're like, Babylon, no, ah, run away. <laughs> All right, so that's just, that's, you know, and you're just feeling that oppressive, you know, we're coming. We have the Abrahamic faith covenant. We're all just part of the one same people worshiping God and the, the many expressions. And you're like, no, 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 Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through him. I don't want you. Run away. Right? <laughs> Run away. 
So all of that is happening, right? That's packed into there as well, right? So many layers to these things. And then he says, and you shall hear, look, see here in verse nine, you shall hear of wars and commotions. And we went and we looked at that word commotions. We've done a couple videos on that now. And it just talks about this massive instability, like, 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 a, like a revolution, right? That begets more instability. And you can look around and see some since March, April, May, June, July, August. And you look at the news and they're, they're like getting out of control, out in the cities and this is all paid for this is all this is a very real spiritual battle taking place in the realm of this physical manifestation of a trojan horse of people with this blm and antifa that are making it seem like it's a political movement for social justice and to to, to make things good but in all reality at its very core and spencer smith talked about this and did a great video uh on blm and, and beyonce and black magic this is an occultic movement this is as satanic as it can get and there are a lot of incredibly intelligent beautiful black people out there that realize that blm is a marxist occultic witch fest and that you should, ought not to identify with them by your skin color ethnicity culture or what have you that it's not even about your first birth it is all about your rebirth getting into your rebirth and now you yoke together with whatever family and whatever color and whatever culture people get into that one new mankind in christ because these old things are passing away we must be in year 5992 and on that yom teruah that yet yom hadin that feast of trumpets that day and hour no man knows these are all names for it uh and many other yom Take a zikaron, day of remembrance, the, the, the opening day of the time of Jacob's trouble, the, the opening of the gates, Isaiah 26, I think, to um, Ha Kedushan, Nessu, the wedding ceremony. Um, yes, the day of the resurrection, so many other names. Um, Yom, Hadi, uh, Yom Adonai, uh, the day of Christ. Um, the day when Christ takes us and the birthing pains start that seven years, um, the day of opening the books, a lot could be said about that. Um, when the, the thief on the cross comes, his, his coronation, when we crown him and, and pledge our allegiance to him. Yom Harat, uh, the, the day of the world's inception that we're like a do over. And he's the last Adam. I'll let you figure out who we are. <laughs> There's a duo there. Figure it out. <laughs> um, Jesus' birthday was even on a Feast of Trumpets, 9-11-3 BC. We know for a fact. It's not like, oh, well, maybe. No, we know for a fact. The star that astonished the world. Read that book. It's free on the internet. It will completely make sense to you. He uses the stars to pinpoint. And no, it is not astrology. It is, those are God's stars. They belong to him. He can do whatever he wants with them. So you have, um, you have what very much appears to be these things ticking off where Christ is telling you, be not terrified for these things must come to pass. And we're watching them come to pass. And so you could go, oh, we're already tracking through the ninth verse of Luke 21 for realsies in real time. Yeah, and it's getting worse. It's getting more violent. It's getting more scary. And underneath it all is this big spiritual battle the size of Texas. But we know who's going to win. Hallelujah. But the end is not yet. Um, and I don't know why they put it by and by in English, but it just means it's not yet. So in other words, something is setting up and don't be afraid. He's telling you these are his clear instruction to you. Why? Because the day of, of division is coming. And if you're in him, if you've gotten into the Ark of the Renewed Covenant with Captain Jesus, read Hebrews. Um, the Bishop of your soul, read Hebrews. The heir of all things, read Hebrews. Then you are safe in the hands and the arm of God and the arms of God. And you can read Psalm 27 and Psalm 91, and your your instructions are to wait upon the Lord. And I was thinking about this yesterday as I was looking through all this stuff. I don't 
see any instruction from him about what to do with this thing they want to put in your arm. I don't think we're going to be here for that, despite the fact that they are um, pushing that. And so I'm just... Mm, we're creepy. One world religion and world peace. Oh, of course they want to defend the police so they can bring in robots and drones. Um, you should see the plans the World uh, Economic Forum has um, for uh, drone use. Anyhow, we are getting dangerously close to, to fulfilling more scripture. <laughs> There's more scripture. Let's, let's click on this for a second. I just want to see how long it is. We are witnessing unprecedented one world religion structures, declarations of world peace, things taking place that have never taken place before. Now we know that in the last days, there will be a one world religion. There will be a peace deal, a covenant with many. And it's important that people acclimate themselves with the the labels of this the deal of the century okay the peace deal by the trump administration the abrahamic faiths initiative and the abraham accord yeah the human fraternity of world peace and the international religious freedom by the state department of the united states and supporting the people understand all of these important these details because they are all one cohesive unit now this begins if when we follow and monitor the activities of these two men if we follow what pope francis is doing if we follow his trips in the middle east and if we follow donald trump if we follow the president of the United States and his trip in the Middle East and his actions uh, over the course of the years are clearly showing us that the uh, prophesied things in the scriptures are taking place. Here you have Donald Trump meeting with Pope Francis. Okay, so this is where I would disagree with um, Leland. He, and I think a lot of other people, by mistake or by purposeful leading, I don't know which, probably a little bit of both, a lot of people in on it, a lot of, a lot of people want you to believe that Trump is the Antichrist, and you have this whole engine with, with NAR and even Donald coming out and going, I am the chosen one, and uh, people like Mark Taylor, I guess, saying that Christ is the king of Israel and all of these different things. And I think that this is significant subterfuge. Again, there is a level of deception at play. But him, this one here, uh, if that's not the false prophet who would be kind of like, I think like a, like a John the Baptist from hell. What am I looking at? Whoa. Do you see how the kingdom is setting up and how it has nothing, no good intentions for children? And it's interesting because the entire organization that he's over has had so much to do with child trafficking and abusing of children. But then really, so does the Trump administration and everybody that's had any uh, dealings with government Hollywood. Those are all Masons. Those are, those are just Masons that have been put in different positions of power. There are some in the church as well. And they they <laughs> they are setting up for this kingdom of darkness, man. The the forerunner is doing his work, and Trump is just um, doing a lot of work. As you know, the Bible says there will be many antichrists, and he's one of them. But really, you have this Jayish AI enhanced beast that will be launched. Uh, and he will hail from the desert, like Christ said. Do not believe him. So I would disagree with some of those points with Leland. But this is the thing. This is the big thesis of, of today's video. And just the trying to 
trying to grab so many pieces and tie them all together into a knowledgeable, easy to understand format when you have so many fragments from hell with what is happening and what I see in scripture. I have been looking to find out what are our marching orders and what, what are we to do regarding this thing that gets put in your arm. And I can't find anything. And everybody is so quick to rush to judgment and parrot puke that this is the mark of the beast. I think there's a three-step process getting your bodies ready for it with the third one being the mark of the beast. I think that the thing in your arm is like step one, getting into a database, getting you ready for a social credit score, getting you um, this digital ID, getting you this um, spyware on the inside, spyware on the outside, bring you into the collective system and make, it's like stage one of the oneness, right? Of Babylon, the humanity and rebellion from the very top down to the bottom, this big, big, big coming control system that's coming. Step two, it looks to me like whatever Elon Musk has with this getting electrons impl implanted into your brain and connecting you with the internet, the internet of all things, again, bringing you more into that system, giving you giving you more godlike powers, so to speak. I don't know what role AI, if any, will have at that point. I really am not certain, but they, they have to... They have to bring people into the slowly to have them crawl over thousands of years worth of warning not to take something on your forehead or your hand. And even that's on the very top of your snoggy. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says the mark of the beast will be put on your forehead and almost like between your eyes where they always play around with, you know, art, putting that third eye there. And I was listening to videos yesterday about people that I got into the new age and then they had played around with these things and invited them and they came and freaked them out. And it was interesting because when they use the name of Jesus, all comfort, all peace came and the evil demonic presence left. And this girl was so irritated that she had been deceived and that she had gone through this and she immediately ran to Jesus in the Bible. Anyhow, it's very interesting. But you have this massive deception setting up and you have this occult power being used by all of these different players. And we have to be making sure that people are born again to go with Christ when Christ comes and understanding the nearness of the events and how they're all swirling together in, in one and how there is an imposter Christ and he's coming. And people are being manipulated along this pathway. I surmise that half, well, it says in the Bible, halfway through the tribulation, after 14 judgments, then the mark of the beast is offered, right? And so I don't know if this is like techno possession, like you yoke with the, the abomination of desolation, mother earth, techno um, awareness, Lucifer and you worship the imposter Christ become this new creation in the Antichrist reject Jesus and you are damned to hell that's kind of what I see happening and I see warning for the mark of the beast I see that I don't think the church who is sealed with the Holy Spirit who can't be unborn again are going to be here for the mark of the beast. I think the mark of the beast is for the slaves that are cut off in unbelief, and then they will need to choose. And obviously, by the time that people start repenting and getting saved, when the witnesses come and the 144,000 repent, um, people will know that they are in that famed time, that horrible time. Now, he thinks we're in it right now, and I disagree with him. Christ has to come first in Revelation 10 and give authority and say, time shall be no more. And his coming will be as lightning that comes from east to the west. And men will look up and they will they will have heart attacks and they will be frightful and they will be afraid. And Christ is coming in his chariot for his bride, for this transition, for this coming period of time. And we know that it is ramping up because they want to put, they want to stick people with this thing. And I can't find any directions in the Bible about what to do for this thing. Because I don't think it's going to be an issue for us. I think it's going to be an issue for those that get left behind. And I do see a lot of death uh, with the first 
five seals. So the Antichrist comes with this fake global peace garbage. And um, let's back it up here for a second. Yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. You have um, taking peace from the earth. I think that's just a way of saying depopulation. And there could be world wars too, because what better way to depopulate than war, right? I mean, that's perfect. It's not good, but it's perfect. Um, and uh, as well as there's probably going to unleash, just like the World uh, Economic Forum, <laughs> we have so much to discuss. They have a plan for drones and everything else. Global drones, a global police force, a global dark system of such evil. A fourth industrial revolution, a fourth AI enhanced computer robot spy surveillance hellhole, making 1984 like, like a little schoolgirl tea party on Sunday. It's going to be bad for the slaves. You have the third seal, and, and we're going to get back to Christian's video here in a moment because he's going to be telling you about this famine that they're producing. And, and he has talked quite a lot about this famine and it's coming. And see, so we need to start thinking again, going back to this thesis of the nearness of time, preparing for this, this division, preparing for this time of trans, um, uh, what did I call it? Uh, not transformation. I mean, that too with glorification, but what, but what was the word that I used? transition transition this coming time of transition that christ would be ready and be watching because he was going to do something based he's going to consequence people based on what they did with the cross this this time of transition is coming and so hold on. okay so anyhow so timing is 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 um of the essence i think is a point to be made um if they're fashioning a famine and we need to be leaving before the start of that famine then it and and and, and before the vaccinations, as they're talking about November 1st, then it kind of stands to reason, along with everything else that we just detailed out, that he said, you know, how we've entered onto the pages of scripture, the deception, the God makers, rumors of war and war, um, the time is near, reset, and uh, the commotion, the instability, and don't be afraid, um, for this is not the end, and the end has a beginning, and we've talked about the transition, then it sounds to me from scripture and just from logic okay so they're getting rid of all the food and we're not going to be starving we're going to be given glorified flesh and christ is going to appropriate or give to us the consequences of trusting him and he talks about it in a really interesting way in some of the gospels the kingdom of god is coming when you see this rival kingdom setting up and so on and so forth know that the, that it is almost here the kingdom of god is coming and, and i am coming i'm paraphrasing and the application of that is your glorification and this is why he talks about at the end of luke 21 he says let look up lift up your head for your redemption draws nigh that is talking about glorification and if you know your scriptures just look up the word liberty just liberty look up the word for inheritance go check out the scriptures about inheritance and liberty you are children of the light, not of the dark, and you will be consequenced as such. There is a pre-tribulation rapture, but it's not random. And it's not that God doesn't know. And Jesus knows all things. Read John. Twice it talks about the fact that Jesus knows all things. You have to understand it from a Hebrew perspective, because Jesus is a Hebrew. And it was talking about this feast. Be ready and be watching for your inheritance. For this feast, for this coming glorification of the saints of God, for your birthday and for your wedding with Christ. It seems to me that the timing is pointing absolutely to this year because they are manifesting the very conditions and pushing over the dominoes, friends, of creating the famine that will end up being the third seal. And you can see the race, the finish line of the race, rather. The fourth seal is actual pestilence, which is something that follows war <laughs> very simply plus they are probably going to let something out to use mother nature as they call it i don't call it that to um bring depopulation so they're going to have a, a quarter of the earth dead by the first seal that's a lot of people so we can see how they're bringing these things into being even though they're big giant fat liars okay and then the fifth one seems to have something to do with refusing to you know, they become 
born again. And I think that is exactly where the Noahide covenant comes in, where the people say, no, I'm not doing this. No, I'm not getting a vaccine. I don't know if they, if that comes in at that point, I'm not really clear on those details. Uh, I'm sure people will hound them for a while. Uh, there's just a, there, the, nobody really saw that coming, right? I mean, we saw, don't be deceived, but like, we didn't really know what that meant. And so now, now we have this new thing to consider, this weirdness, right? <laughs> and it's been such a deception because um, the prophecy teachers never really helped us to understand because I guess they themselves didn't know. But anyhow, I really think the fifth seal is, um, I mean, it says this in the Bible, these are about the martyrs. These are new, fresh martyrs. And uh, underneath this new regime where you have to be part of this global dark kingdom as a global citizen, gotta be a good little global citizen. Right, because they're going into this techno-fascism and transhumanism, yes. And it all flows together. The um, the techno surveillance 1984 state will help to enforce that people get under the Noahide. And so for those that won't, there's a consequence. And then once you, some people do get under it, then once you get caught breaking when you die by beheading. So this cultish, horrible union of Masons, Islamics, Jays, and so on and so forth. And um, these things are coming as the thesis of this video. Now, as far as one world religion and world peace. Okay, so notice how I was, the other thing I was thinking about. The other thing I was thinking about was, you know, they told us that this was all about the um, Palestinians and the is, you know, who, this land for peace thing, right? And it seems to have matriculated from that over to being about the creation of the one world religion. And it seems like it's a situation of bait and switch. Do you notice that? And so they have the Abrahamic based initiative that Callista Gingrich brought forth, where it really just like yokes our government up with the dictates of um, the Pope and their organization of coexists and everything is one, everything is equal, and la da 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 da. And the terrorist is a Christian that says, no, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him, John 14 6. Okay, and then, you know, they did this whole Abrahamic base thing where they're trying to say that, you know, everything, you know, is about looking at this, um, you know, uh, this fake Christianity, Islam, they wouldn't say it's fake, but I am, Islam and Jay all together, Abraham is our father and blah, 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 which is just a bunch of nonsense. Um, so they're matriculating you over past the land for peace deal thing to spiritual unity and you're like no 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 that's 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 the whore of babylon that's not worshiping jesus that's worshiping the imposter and all of the world religions together in one doing that as far as the human uh, fraternity for world, world peace i think what he's talking about is the various documents that have been signed by uh pope and islam again just strengthening that uh, unity kind of like a john the baptist from hell getting it all prepared, getting the kingdom manicured, ready, getting the, the, the people of the kingdom of darkness for this final seven years ready is what you see happening, which should just be screaming of the nearness of Christ coming. And again, I think we're on year 5,992. And on that Yom Hadin and all the other titles, it, that's like a New Year's. And it's going to flip over to year 5,993 on the Feast of Trumpets, Yom Hadin, so on and so forth when that sliver moon is there. And so Christ does things according to a plan. And he gives his father the honor of saying, go and get your bride. Go and divide the people, the one that shall be taken, a group, and the other that shall be left behind, slave. They didn't want him. He's coming for someone. And the ones that didn't want him, shocker, are not going with him. They're going into this kingdom of darkness that wants to kill them. And so you're sitting here watching the very conditions right now. Souping up for that. And I can't possibly say everything in this video. So I refer you to tour my channel because we have lots of other videos. And we, we go into every little nook and cranny and piece that we can connect in and show you what's going on. Because there's so many. I just I literally don't have enough time in the day 
to take it all in, pour it through a biblical world view, and then um, put it into a video and explain it out. And some things that I'm talking about, nobody else is, and that's kind of a concern. And then there definitely there's other channels out there that they are, um, they put out good content and it helps educate me and I can bring it into to a cohesive, cohesive understanding of what's going on. So I'm very grateful to many channels out there that have um, edified me and, and, and lifted me up and helped me understand things. I'm very grateful. And I just want to be a blessing to others and to feed the church. I want to call people to repent and get into Christ, into this ark of salvation. Now will you have a chance? I was reading some passages in Isaiah two nights ago, and it just shook me to my core that the time is running out. Ticky, ticky, tick, tock. Time is running out. Seek me while you shall be able to find me. I think he said it a little cooler than that. Need to get saved before he comes. And then this international religious freedom. So I think what he's talking about here with this, okay, what's really freaky with this, oh my goodness, is that they're kind of like setting up this, I don't know if you want to call it like a constitution or a movement or what, but it is, it is almost like a satanic protection for all people to do whatever they want except for Christianity, right? And, and so they're actually kind of drawing out this picture, and not just them, others too, but just to deal with one thing at a time. We're the born again Christian and Jesus the Christ are being cast as the terrorists, the unloving, mean, hateful, slavery oriented, Greco Roman, you know, whatever, fascist dictates um, that tell everybody else, you're going to hell. I mean, even, <laughs> even if people reject Jesus, and, yeah, you're going to hell. But anyhow, so they have this kind of caricature, right? And they want to, they want to be able to punish those who don't fit in with their system of saying that all paths lead to God. Oh, you don't believe that? You're a terrorist. Oh, if you don't support and, and advance and, and, and agree with us that, you know, various sexual things out there, rainbow mafia, men dressing as women and so on and so forth. If you don't agree with us, that's a virtue to be protected or the terrorists. And so that's what's going on. And then second to that, what you have happening here is this, um, let me go find it really quick. Hold on. Here, law, law library. I'm over here at seven grains of salt. You might want to go check her out and give her some love. I've been listening to more of her videos. Um, I don't agree with her. The whole church is going to the tribulation. I, I don't agree with that. I see uh, freedom coming for those who want freedom. Uh, and the slaves that don't are going to get it. The time of Jacob's trouble is what it's called. It's for unbelievers. But nonetheless, uh, she has some pretty good stuff here. And she talked about this law library. And, you know, they're using that as a Trojan horse label to do whatever they want, any type of change they want to affect, any type of global government, any type of like getting all the nations of the world onto the same page with, with law. That's the thing they're using. And that is more tied in with this, you know, religious freedom, you know, to be protected from from, uh, you know, the big bad bullies. You're the big bad bully, Christian. And really what it is is um, coming after us. But then you can also see in Revelation 12, verse 5, Christ comes for that heir. Christ comes for that church. And I thought this was a very good video here, too. It's pretty short, so let's play it, and then we'll go back to Christian's, Christian's video. Hey, I hope everyone is doing good out there. Well, I'm sure most of you saw that U.S., Israel, and United Emirates have this agreement. Very interesting, though, to see that Jared Kushner had to be there on that flight, the first flight going over, and with the word peace on the plane. Very interesting times, I have to say. So let's just take a really brief look. We're all children of God. No, scripture says that you have to be adopted into the family of God, which everybody is invited to. But um, this is a big giant lie. 
One of the greatest things I love about working with the president is that he doesn't play, play it safe. He tries to take on challenges, and peace in the Middle East was something that became an actual pursuit. See, and it's not even just about peace in the Middle East. It is about bringing about a one-world peace to the entire world. I am convinced this is the subterfuge and the entry point of uh, bringing everybody into this big, giant lie. And it is interesting to see this USA Islamic um, Israeli, too, I guess, uh, United Arab Emirates, Emirates uh, a, agreement with a, like a, a financial, a, a, a financial um, agreement, I'm going to call it. See, they want their peace and prosperity, but for the whole world. Th th there is some subterfuge going on that is helping to craft a global uh, supposed peace, but their peace is just about money making, about trapping people up, about lying to them, about grouping them into one, because it's so much easier to control people in this system of this fake unity. An eye on all this because so much is happening. And I'm going to go back to this one article that came out in Fox News just a few weeks ago and just point out things on the right here. Abraham Accord father of all three great faiths. That's what Trump said, father of all three great faiths. To me, this... So he is not a Christian. He is a fake Christian. He is a Mason. He is a Kabbalist. These are not three great faiths. Only one, le only, <laughs> only through Christ can people be born again. Everything else is a lie. But see, they, they are putting together this financial partnership sounds like something that I saw not long ago and that the UAE was building and it's the one world religion where they'll have the three buildings of the three main religions there on site unbelievable I don't know that's just what I'm saying I this is what I see it's the one world religion coming into fruition yeah with all of these people just saying that things slightly differently but everything seems the same, and especially right. with the seven Noahide laws and the UN. So beware, because the Zionists have been helping them build the third temple and implementing the seven Noahide laws, and they don't even know what they are. Heads are going to be rolling is all I can say. Yeah, I completely. Oh, and every president, regardless of what side they were on in America, has been behind all of this. So I'm just saying that Soros, Rockefeller, Rothschilds, and even Adelson has been helping this happen. Someone mentioned Adelson and I thought I'd put his picture in there because absolutely he belongs in there. Well, tracking and tracing happened and they brought it forward yesterday. Right, and when you consider, she's also done work talking about Lancet and Lancet was like getting everybody into this, um, I can only call it a database, like like being part of the, the cloud. Like all of your information, all of your data, everything being tracked by computer AI and so on and so forth, basically in a nutshell. So there is a techno imprisonment, basically. Techno imprisonment that is coming. And all of these governments are invested millions and even some of them a billion to making sure that you get this thing stuck in your arm that apparently has RFID in it. Then you have what we've already discussed, all of the technology around you from the 5G to the mini satellites that are called a constellation, hello, constellation. Read your Revelation 12, people. Dragon, constellation. Look up the Hebrew Maseroth or Christ stars. He's telling a story in the stars. Satan counterfeits everything, but those are Christ stars. You've got an entire prison planet set up ready to eat you. <laughs> 